We got sick of telling people that Travis was in the band, but he didn't play anything. They just did not understand that. We'd be like, we try to use the, he's the Andy Warhol to our Velvet Underground analogy, but that didn't really work either because, you know, his, his role's a really complicated one and it's a really, uh, it's hard to describe. It was important for him to be there with us and there were things that we wanted to do that we really couldn't do with just the four of us, like, uh, like the computer stuff. So we were like, you know, Travis, on tour, we want you to start playing drums a little bit and, uh, and, and beating us up <laughs> and, um, and you, doing the, the sequencing, the computer stuff. Every show prior to our tour, I was sort of more of a documenter of the shows. During the tour and then on, my part in the shows became a lot more, well, I became a lot more of an important part of, of what was experienced during the show. I had created some sampling that I used during it in between each song and everything. On the tour, it was nice to see people that had never seen us before take it in and try to experience what we were trying to create. And I really enjoyed doing that because not only was I a documenter on tour, but I was also a member of the band then. So I felt like I had a better connection with the crowd. <laughs> You know, I think tours when we first started beating the shit out of each other. There's always a sort of letdown of energy when you see a band and they, they stop playing a song and then, you know, the next song begins. And we wanted to make the entire show 100%. All the time that we were on stage, we wanted to make it an overall idea and experience. I think it just so happened that we were like hurting our, I mean, I was, I was kind of hurting myself, falling down and hitting my head sometimes and stuff like that. And I think it first started happening, we'd run into each other, or like hit each other with our guitars by accident. And it was like, yeah, you know, you fucker. So uh, we ended up throwing each other around a little bit. And then like the first time I really hit anybody was at, at the post. And I just, I freaked out and I did this massive drop kick and like got both, I think I might've got Travis in the face, but I got both Travis and Justin in the same kick. <laughs> I thought before tour, um, we knew what things we didn't like about each other. We grew up a lot as band members and as people on the tour. Maybe we understood each other better after that. We realized that we didn't want to do those kind of things anymore. Uh, you go on tour with someone, it's only going to make what your opinion of them stronger. Um, and you know, if you start off with someone and you feel that you know you have a staunchy opinion of them, it's only going to become worse. Uh, but regardless of that, we had been to, um, doing shows and practicing like every night possible. I think it was a combination of both, for one, being cramped in that little space, and for two, playing just nine songs over and over and over. <laughs> circumstances were out of our control so Ryan was just really on edge and, and upset and I think he uh, took it out on Eric a little bit. He took it out on all of us but most of us just shrugged it off. cramped ass van with Ryan 
you don't want to say something to make a, a situation like that explode when you have one more week of riding with that person to go. The, the communication and relationship between Eric and Ryan began to really dwindle a lot. Um, there wasn't much of it prior. I got along with everybody else in the band but Ryan. I remember especially between Eric and I, there's, there's always a tension between he and I anyway. So, I mean, being close together for that long and having to be around each other for a week, you know. You can really, uh, really get sick of that person, like, over the edge. We were sick of putting up with those little things about one another. Without any separation, really, between all of us, it was, uh, you know, kind of rough. Look, this isn't how you treat people. Why do you do this? Et cetera, et cetera. show do you feel like a feeling of euphoria when you perform? No, I'm usually consumed with like anger and like a, yeah it is it is like a heightened uh, I don't know it's weird playing with this band man because I'll, I'll be there are moments where I won't remember and I'll, I'll just like I'm so into it it's like I'm not even there anymore and it is kind of a euphoria and at the end it explodes but it's a violent euphoria it's an aggressive euphoria. This band has become less about the music it's become more about the idea of uh, just not having any rules and letting go. I don't know. It's like I live for uh, for that for the end of portraits when I can just it's like a release. I just let go of myself and I do whatever the hell I want. And uh, that usually involves hurting something, destroying something. It's an impulse that I think a lot of people have all the time. And I can let go and I can do that. So for me, it's not. It's it's almost like I'd be okay with going up there and setting my instrument and letting it feed back and just, just wailing on everybody. But I don't know if I'd be capable of doing that without pushing myself up to that point with the music. I don't know. I don't know what music is to me anymore.